that come with having this kind of resource this mother a resource that we can take and take and take from but we welcome on another episode you guys thank you so much for tuning in if you're joining for the very first time as well thank you for clicking on this video there is this content creator that has been going viral for the past one week now because of a video he made targeting black women and you know a message he has for black women there are some people actually receiving this message well and even thanking him for saying all those things he said in his video and sharing that to the world and there are some as well saying his video is so tone deaf especially coming from someone who got married to a white woman overall this video sparked a lot of conversation it opened that door of discourse and people are having a lot of things to say this video is going to be in two parts because his own original video is about five minutes and i want you guys to listen to what he has to say so you can get the context of where these stitches are coming from so it's going to be in two part so without wasting much time let's just get right into it because it's about to be a little long ride okay i haven't been on tiktok for a bit and um i noticed everyone was tagging me in the whole andrew schultz thing about black women i'll make a different comment about andrew schultz and that little rat um akash thing but i want to i want to say something about black women and um this is my mother and i i god is my witness right now may the lord strike me down if i'm lying my mother told me and my siblings when we were young, when we were young kids, before we, like, I remember it was when my older brother started secondary school. It was a big deal, my older brother going off to the big boy school. And my mum sat us down and she said, if you're ever in trouble, if you're ever in trouble out there in the real world, look for a black woman. My mum said this. My mum was raised in this country from the age of six, the UK. She said, look for a black woman. She said, anywhere in the world, a black woman will help you. She was never wrong. She was never wrong. But, like... It's incredible that my mother said that, and I don't know what my mum went through. But I, I remember seeing photos of my mum in school when she was in high school and stuff, and like she had loads of uh, black friends and stuff, and they were all black women. Because um, my mum wasn't a pick me, she only had female friends. And um, she, um, so she obviously felt some protection. And uh, growing up for me, I noticed in my school, it was a very predominantly white school, the black teachers looked out for me. I had a black Jamaican teacher called Mrs. Forrester. She looked out for me. But even outside of school, when I started growing out my hair, it was a black woman that taught me how to look after my curls, what products to use. It was the, it's, it's black women that built me up on this platform and got me to where I am. I have to give credit to where credit is due. It was women in general, but black women specifically who boosted me and told me how pretty I was and how great I was. Um, but I, 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 I am trying to make a point here, and it's that black women get treated the worst. The worst. Malcolm X said this. He goes, they are... Unfortunately, they are treated the worst by the medical field, by the education field, by the police, by everything. Yet they're the ones that give the most love. And for like, I, I saw what he said in that post, Andrew Schultz, and like some comments and I, it's, it's sad. And I, it hurts my heart when I think of like, of those things. Cause I, I'll tell you right now, it wasn't that long ago. My friend Jordan, who I love and boast about, Jordan's got these... Uh, it, Jordan's family is just... When I was homeless and Jordan introduced me to his family, they treated me like I was one of them. They didn't, they, they didn't even care. They were just like... They treated me like family. It didn't feel awkward. You know when you go over to someone's house and you just sat in the corner for a bit? It didn't feel like that. And I know not all black people are the same. Obviously, I know that. But there's one thing that black people universally have, and that is that beautiful smile and beautiful love. That they just, they, they just give out. But I'm telling you, it's a special feeling. I remember going to Jordan's once and like I was just heartbroken. His family just like welcomed me and they were like, where's the... F you know what they... <laughs> you know what his family said to me? They go, they go oh, we've got, a, we've got a plate ready for you. And then <laughs> Jordan's cousin just looks me up and goes, you're still skinny boy. And I'm just like, right, well, yeah, that, I know I'm home. Um, just... No, I can't, I can't sit and, uh, uh, and not make a comment on this because, um, no. And, and uh, I know I made a post, like, months ago about black men, but, uh, I, I, yeah. Just, and go look through history. Go look at what Nina Simone did. Go look at what, go look at what, um, Doreen Lawrence, uh, Stephen Lawrence's mother did. Go, go look at what, um, Betty Shabazz did. Like these these people are just incredible. 
incredible. And we don't we don't give credit where credit is due. We really don't. Um, and I think nowadays we're living in this world where we, if someone's pretty, we give them credit. Credit for what? They were just born beautiful, but like we don't look at the person's soul. We don't look at like um, who who. We don't look at what people can attribute to life. If we did, we would give Mary C. Cole a huge statue. So, that's my that's my two cents, and uh, I hope um, just thank you, and and uh, yeah, and thank you to the uh, specific thank you to the Jamaican community because there was this Jamaican woman who helped my grandmother, and that's a different story, and uh, um, just black women in general thank you for for everything you've done for me for everything you've done for my family and for everything you've done for our people um my people wouldn't have survived in the uk if it weren't for black people standing up for us coming to the protest for us protesting with the bus rallies for us yeah i know my history so thank you that one man who was like my mom said if you have any trouble find a black woman just proves how nonsensical racism is because how are black women stereotyped for being bad mothers, but also community protectors. Like, society dehumanizes them while also humanizing parts of them. And him saying that this is advice that he got from his mom while he was a kid proves to me that everybody sees that black woman, despite the stereotype, raise regular ass people. They raise contributing members to society while society actively harms and or neglects them. And as well-intentioned as his statement was, it really was like, ain't this some shit? Like, y'all really only see us when it's beneficial. It's not that I'm upset with Mustafa's mother for making the observation that she made about black women and how protective they are. Because it's an observation that she's made probably throughout her life that she felt so comfortable in trusting the safety of her children in the hands of unknown black women more than anybody else. And that alone represents a positive recognition, a wonderful one even. Because a mother, the biggest protector of her child, is willing to entrust his safety, their safety, in the hands of black women strangers more than anyone else and that's wow that's wonderful and this recognition could have came from perhaps her observation of black women as being more motherly more caring more sensitive or sensible even more protective more defensive more nurturing all traits that we could actually attach to a mom and i'm not going to take this to the racial stereotypes of black women being mammies and none of that stuff what i am going to say is when you think about a mom or your mother it is most likely you're thinking about how she has been to you when you see mothers in cartoon or in media and how they're taking care of their loved ones especially their children you think about how good of moms they are how kind and nurturing and how protective and defensive they are. And there's a sense of gratitudes that come with having this kind of resource, this mother. A resource that we can take and take and take from, but we never really sit down to think about who's giving her. If mom is always there to take care of me, who takes care of mom when she's sick? If mom is always giving to me, who gives her when she needs? And it brings me to those trending videos of Mexican mothers reunited with their own mothers after 20, 30 years of not seeing each other. And how these 40, 50 year old women would turn back into 10 year olds. They would come and crawl in their mother's arms. Because it is their mothers that could take them back to that state of youthfulness. A nurturing state full of security, unlike what anybody else could give them. And now let's take it back to Mustafa. His mother's observation is not an unpopular one, as it is said by many people. Many people from all ethnic and racial backgrounds believe in that. That a black woman is the most likely to be honest and kind and nurturing to your kids. That a black woman is also a fortitude with a security blanket and she's willing to defend you. Because because she knows what it's like to not be defended, especially when you need help. But even with all of this understanding, we can understand that society has never recognized these things to be true about black women. Because society's treatment of black women is quite different from who we believe they are with that understanding. If black women are the kindest, nicest people, why are we not nice to them? If black women are considerate caretakers, why don't we take care of them? If black women are securities and defenders, why don't we defend them? For centuries, we've allowed the worst kind of media and understanding about black women to exist and prevail above all else in social media and all sorts of other media actually in many of these cultures bringing a black woman home is actually a big issue while seemingly talking about black women having a heart of gold and being nurturing and wonderful and nice and caretaking we seem to describe them as bitter ugly and ruthless most of the time we talk about them and i know i'm a black woman but i'm talking from society's standpoint as a society we are extremely mean to black women as individuals we can be extremely mean and inconsiderate to black women we don't give them the benefit of the doubt and yet despite all of that many 
many people share Mustafa's mother's belief, and that's not fair. So it's not that I disagree with what his mother said, because it is true. And when I have my little one, I will tell them the same thing. But it's not all too positive of a recognition when you understand that we're being used. It's quite almost a parasitic relationship. Because for a lot of black women, most if not all of the care that they provide to the world is not sent back to them. It's never reciprocated. And because black women know that, most black women know that and understand that, they turn to each other for comfort. They turn into each other for support. And while sisterhood is great, it's wonderful, it's blissful even. One of the principles of this sisterhood exists on the isolation that society has rendered us in. And I think that's why you'll see so many black women make angry videos how they're no longer supporting this kind of stereotype. They're protecting their peace because they're drained. The video is circulating of an Asian man talking about if you're in trouble, go to a black woman. I'm here to tell you why you shouldn't do that. Black women in general, we've been adultified from very, very young. There were five, six year old black girls that are already being expected to look after their siblings. The whole of our lives we've been, we have been adultified in every way possible. So the last thing you need to do is when we finally have a chance to rest and relax and we finally know how to say no to certain things, we finally know when someone's taking the out of us. Last thing you need to do is now start alerting human beings on the street that if they're in trouble to look for a black woman, don't do that. Because I feel like we can't rest as black women. Black women are lovely by nature. We're caring, we're nurturing, but a lot of that care and that nurturing come from the fact that we've been adultified. So we naturally feel like we have to take charge. We naturally feel like we have to make people feel better. We naturally feel like we have to look after people. But what you're doing in spreading that message is now you're bringing the adultification that we suffered with as children into adulthood. I'm not the one to look for when you're in trouble. I'm so sorry, I'll help as best as I can, but look for anybody. I feel like people don't understand when a black woman makes a video and says, oh, don't look for me. Everyone's like, oh, she's mean, she's aggressive. No, 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 no. You don't understand that's a dangerous message that you're spreading. We're not, we're not your saviors. We've got our own lives, we've got our own things to do. And we've already spent so much of our lives. I was speaking to a woman yesterday talking about, oh, she's got five brothers. She's the youngest. She's everybody's mum. So when I make videos about, oh, my mum's telling me one thing and telling my brother another thing, it's not a joke. There's so many things that come from a black woman or a black girl being adultified right obviously a black woman can't be adultified but if there's another word somebody give it to me but there's just too much pressure on black women to be somebody's savior to change somebody in this sense no sorry do it yourself and that's women in general right but this video was talking about black women so i'm talking about black women black girls are adultified like crazy so when we get to 1920 and we finally can say oh i can't lie i'm not doing that and it usually isn't even 1920 sometimes it's even tw i only learned to say no at 26 right don't then start telling strangers on the road to look for me when they're in trouble. I've just learned to rest. Please, don't do that. If you're ever in a bad situation and you're feeling unsafe, just find a black woman. At least that's the discourse happening today. And I just kind of wanted to talk about that and sort of my experience with this on the other end of it. So this is a theme in a lot of the videos that I've made, but a lot of you guys know that because I am alternative and because I live in Southern California and because I have historically not lived n close to the city i have lived in a lot of situations where i am one of the only black people and when you're one of the only black people people tend to project all of their ideas both positive and negative onto you and there's this sort of disappointment when you don't perform the way that they expect for you to perform. Something that I have a lot of personal resentment towards is how little I am able to exist in public without the expectation of being in service to complete strangers. Now, as you guys know, I'm a YouTuber. I make a lot of videos where I am educational and I am helpful. And occasionally, sometimes people approach me with an awareness of who I am and they wanna to talk to me for that reason. But something that I've had to unpack as I've been living in the city and had a lot of experiences where people are approaching me and, you know, basically demanding my undivided attention to their specific thing that they're trying to talk about is that a lot of this is really just an impulse that people have towards black women. A lot of people see black women as nurturing. And it's very hard for me to hear that without, of course, thinking about the mammy the archetype of the mammy that is based on the way that black women have historically put their own children aside to take care of white children and children that are not their own. I guess in a lot of ways, I am a nurturing person, right? But I really hate the fact that there are so many people 
who constantly put me into the role of nurturer and sort of keep me there. I think that the whole idea of if you're in trouble, go, you know, find a black woman. I totally understand why people say that. And I don't think that that's necessarily coming from a place of malice. But I do think that it's really important for people to really think about the ways in which Black women are constantly pressured to essentially do everything but stand up for themselves. I mean, on this app all the time, I'm constantly engaging with especially left-leaning people who will highlight some sort of atrocity against a Black woman in order to just make a political argument, not necessarily even like, you know, show any degree of support towards Black women. There is indeed a femicide against Black women. Black women still experience some of the highest rates of domestic violence. And right now we are seeing so many people come out and be just publicly aggressive against Black women specifically because of Kamala Harris running for the presidency. I don't personally feel like Black women are very protected at all in this society. And that is something hard to feel when you hear stuff like, you know, if you're ever in trouble, turn to a black woman. Because who exactly do black women turn to when we're in trouble? What do you guys think about what the whole said? What do you think about the stitches? What do you think about his video? It's not like what he said in his video is actually wrong, but to a large extent of people coming and stitching that video and saying no, or they are not totally agreeing with it, I totally get where they are coming from. If you have been following what is being said about black women, I don't think you're going to find this reaction strange at all. I love the creator, the very first the very first lady who stitched to that video in if you watch the stitches, if you watch all of the stitches, the very first lady talking about how it is such a parasitic relationship. And I totally agree. She made mention of another example talking about Mexican moms going back to their mom and then, you know, someone who is 40 years, you see them in the arms of their mom, like literally have to like a child because that is the only place that they really feel safe because society never really made, you know, black women especially feel safe. So if mommy keeps pouring and caring and taking care of these people, who is taking care of mom? Who is, you know, getting mom stuff if mommy keeps getting you stuff so i get where these stitches are coming from i get where this reaction is coming from and it literally opened the door of conversation and i want you guys to listen to as much because i actually enjoy all of the stitches this person said that is why the bar is higher for us at work we are supposed to help and sacrifice for everybody as a servant but really has the leader and when you are the leader they feel some type of way about it another person said Although I appreciate what he said, and yet it made my heart smile because we are so nurturing. Looking at it from this from this perspective is also something to think about. And now I am feeling torn because I agree with this also. Another one said, because at work, the only time anyone cares what I think is when they want me to speak up on some ish they are scared to bring up. Because they feel like black women are, you know, courageous enough to say their peace and keep it moving. I say nothing. They get nothing. Exactly. Because even when you speak for those people, it is so easy for them to turn their back and say, oh, they are so aggressive. Angry black woman stereotype. Another one said, then you go to his page and he's married to a white woman. Like, sir, what? Clearly you feel safest with white women. Leave us alone. This is another point that a lot of people have been bringing up that, oh, you have all of these things to say about black women. Your mom even told you you're nurturing black women. Huh? You said black women are the ones who share the most love, but you still settle with a white woman, so you don't like us. Stay with a white woman and leave us alone. This one say, I cry because even though we know this mindset exists, no matter what we print out, we can't do a damn thing except take the ease of fight and be called aggressive. Black men are leading funny or sexy on all shows and movies. On the news, they are scary killers. Black women are less likely to get the sexy femme lead, but all these white women getting BBL, lip filler, high lashes, etc. Reminds me of how black people weren't allowed to use the same water fountains, yet they were breastfeeding other people's kids and cooking their food. Black people are not needy, they are not fit and all of that, but they were literally the ones breastfeeding the, the, the slave kid. They are always not good enough for something, but they know where they are good enough to use them to the worst. So let me know what you guys think about what they all said. Let me know your take about this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.